This video could not only make you a millionaire, but also save you tens of thousands of dollars in retirement, while also providing cash flow and passive income tax-free forever. I'm gonna go over the five ETF categories to consider for your Roth IRA that have been proven to be the absolute best investments for any investor. Within each category, I'm gonna give you a couple of ETFs that you could definitely go ahead and research further. I'll also explain how each of these ETF categories work together and how they build the ultimate Roth IRA portfolio. If you have a favorite ETF category or one that's done really well for you, please throw it down in the comment section so that other people can learn from us. I'm Nolan Govea, my students call me Professor G, and I made this channel to make investing simplified. And this video is gonna keep it super simple and build you a very strong Roth IRA. Getting right to it, the first category is the all-in-one category. This is one where literally you could just invest in this one ETF and be very diversified, very safe, and it actually changes its allocations based on your age and the closer you get to retirement, the more safety it gives you. It's like having a financial advisor do the work for you to move your investments to put you into better safety or more growth when you need it but at one one thousandth the cost. This category is the target date fund category. Target date funds used to only be available in retirement accounts at 401ks, but just recently they released the first target date fund ETFs. I made a video going deep on this a couple days ago, so I'll link to that below. The ETFs are called the iShares LifePath Target Date ETF. When looking at the actual products, you'll notice a date by each one in increments of five years. This is basically for you to pick the year that most closely is associated to when you think you'd retire. So I'm gonna be 65 in 2053, so I'd probably choose the 2055 ETF. These ETFs employ an ETF of ETF structure, utilizing a range of other iShares ETFs to achieve their desired exposures. For example, this is the 2040 fund, and as you can see, it's made up of 13 holdings. Since this retirement date is about 17 years away, the equities portion is much higher than the bonds. The US equities is about 45% of the portfolio, and then another 27 or so percent in international, which is regarded as higher risk, but possibly higher growth or reward. And then you can see that there's a fair amount of bonds or fixed income here, but overall it's only about 16 to 19% of the entire fund. So once it starts to get closer to 2040, the bonds will increase and the equities or stocks will decrease on its own. You won't have to do literally anything, which is such a nice appeal for these funds. Usually the fee for a target date fund is very high, like 0.50%, but for these funds it's closer to 0.10%, which I really like. The next category of ETF that should absolutely be in the Roth IRA is one that I think is probably the top, number one that should be in your Roth IRA. The whole point of the Roth IRA is that anything within the Roth that grows, grows tax-free, including the dividends. So later on, you could be holding this solid dividend fund in your Roth IRA, never have to touch the actual principal, and every dividend that you get every single quarter comes out totally tax-free. Then that principal that's still sitting in the Roth IRA can continue its compound interest and just keep growing, and you'll be able to live off that dividend tax-free for the rest of your life. My favorite dividend ETFs are DGRO, DIVO, VYM, and SCHD. I know I talk a lot about SCHD on this channel, but for those of you that are new, this is my favorite one, and this is the one that I pick primarily. Currently, it has a 3.77% dividend yield. The management fee is only 0.06%, and it has 104 different company stocks within the ETF. The PE ratio is nice and low, especially right now at 13.87 and it's a huge fund at 47 billion total net assets. SCHD tracks the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, and the top sectors within the fund are industrials, healthcare, and financials. The top companies within the ETF are Amgen, Chevron, AbbVie, and Broadcom, among others with a very nice solid dividend and a solid business plan. The current price of SCHD is $69.29. Over the last 10 years, it's had a very solid 11% average yearly appreciation, which is just insane for the total return for a dividend fund. Over this last year, it's down about negative 1.16%, so it's a nice little sale for this ETF today. Passive income dividend investing is one of my favorite forms 
forms of investing because it's bigger than just me or today or even the near future. This is the idea that once you have enough invested, it could generate these dividends where one could live comfortably off just that alone while the capital that's invested keeps compounding and growing, but you never have to touch it. That means you could end up giving your kids or grandkids such a nice inheritance or leave money to the church or charity of your choice after a life well lived. It took me hundreds, maybe a thousand hours to learn all the things that I know about dividend investing. So my goal is to make a resource for you where it's all in one place, it's all very simple and it's very easy to understand and easy to gather the information that you need at the time that you need it to make you a successful dividend investor. I got my friend Ryan Williams involved since he is the dividend expert and we put together a course full of 17 videos and are releasing it on sale for you to have. We go over all the essentials like dividend yield and dates to taxes and growth to eventually helping you put together the perfect dividend portfolio for you. This course is normally $129, but for a limited time, it's on sale for $50 off. Check the link down in my description and I know for a fact that you won't be disappointed that you did. The next category ETF that belongs in every Roth IRA is gonna be that foundational ETF category. And this is very similar to the first one where I believe that people could invest in just this one and be very well diversified and safe and you'd be set up very well. For this, I like two separate indexes and that would be the S&P 500 or the total US stock market. And there's a bunch of ETFs that track both and each of those ETFs are pretty similar to each other. So whichever one that you like best is a great one to pick. For the S&P 500, there's VU, SPY or SPY, and then IVV. For the total US stock market, there's the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI. There's the Schwab US Broad Market ETF, SCHB. And then the iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF, ITOT. My personal favorite here is one that tracks the S&P 500. And for me, I just really like the Vanguard Fund, VOO or VU. VU has a dividend yield of 1.56%. Its management fee is almost nothing at 0.03%. It has 505 companies within the ETF and a PE ratio of 21.9. This fund is massive, one of the biggest ones out there at $866.5 billion of total net assets. The top sectors are financials, healthcare, and information technology. The top companies within the ETF are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, Tesla, Meta, and more. The current price for VU is $386.99. Over the last 10 years, it's had almost a 12% average appreciation per year, which is absolutely amazing. Over this last year, it's up 12.5%. So it's on pace for its average. I can't say enough amazing things about any low fee ETF that tracks the S&P 500. The next category is gonna be a bond or fixed income category. And for those of you that have been watching for a while, you know that I'm not very high on bonds. I don't think that they belong in everybody's portfolio, but there is a time when they should go into your portfolio. And we do need to remember that we're talking about a Roth IRA here. You can only use the funds in retirement. And the only time I actually like bonds is in retirement. So I personally wouldn't be holding a bond fund until retirement. But if you are in retirement or you're a couple years away from getting into retirement, you definitely need to understand how to use these and when to put them in. Bonds stabilize your money because there's basically no downside. It's very similar to that of a high yield savings account where you're not risking money as an investment in say a company or something. The bonds I recommend are government backed and will give you a favorable but low return while keeping your money pretty safe. Now you can just buy bonds directly, but if you're gonna go the ETF route and put this into a Roth IRA, my favorite funds for this would be the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF, ticker BND, the iShares Core Total USD Bond Market ETF, IUSB, and the Spider Bloomberg 1-3 to three Month T-Bill ETF, BIL. Of these, the most broad and diverse and probably my favorite is just going to be the Vanguard Fund, BND. It has a nice solid dividend yield of 4.99%. There's a management fee, very small at 0.03%. Again, very big fund at $291 billion worth of total net assets. The average coupon is 3.1% and yield to maturity is over 5%, which is great. Current price for this is $68.20. Over the last 10 years, it's a little over 
percent appreciation each year because like i said it's going to stabilize your money not necessarily grow but also not necessarily drop either over the last year it's down 1.75 percent so they can go down slightly but remember with that 4.99 percent dividend overall you'd still be up for the year again this category is for those who need to stabilize their money you have enough capital invested and you just want to be as safe as possible so it's not for those of you that are still trying to grow that nest egg. Now this last category is the exact opposite of the last one. And this one is by far the most exciting, which is why I saved it for last. This is mostly for my younger audience, but honestly, I don't see why everyone shouldn't have at least a little portion of their portfolio in this ETF. Growth funds have the potential to exponentially grow faster than anything else, and they're the ones that can shoot up like crazy. They're packed full of companies like Nvidia, who's up 232% for this one year. Meta, who's up 137% for the year, and Tesla, who's up 860% in the last five years. Over the next 10 years, do you think our dependence on technology is gonna be stronger or weaker? Companies are only relying on technology, and not only technology, but new forms of technology and innovative technology, such as AI and blockchain, and this type of a fund has them all. My favorite funds for this are the Schwab SCHG, Vanguard VUG, Vanguard VGT, and Invesco QQQM. Of these, I lean a little bit more towards QQQM, and I go QQQM over QQQ because it's basically the exact same thing, but with a lower fee. Over the last year, QQQM is up 28.73%. The current price is $145, and over the last 10 years, it's had an average appreciation per year of 17.64% for the past 10 years. That's literally insane. It does have a very small dividend yield, 0.67%. The management fee is 0.15, which is the reason again to go with QQQM over QQQ. The benchmark index is the NASDAQ 100, which are the best growth companies in my opinion. The top companies within this ETF are ones that you like to see, like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and Nvidia, but also Broadcom and Adobe, which are pioneers in their space and will continue to grow like crazy. As far as how much of each ETF to put within your portfolio, that's gonna be based off of your risk profile. If you're a little bit younger and can handle a bit more risk, put more of the growth fund, none of the bond fund, have a little bit of the foundation and a, and a good amount of that dividend fund. If you're a little bit closer to retirement age, maybe be building up a specifically that dividend fund because I really think that that passive income strategy is just the best way to go. Make sure to check out the ultimate dividend investing master course with the link down in my description on sale for a limited time and then set up that Roth IRA for ultimate success.